Hello and welcome to another TLDR UK video. On Christmas Day, after weeks and weeks of deadlines coming and going, and both sides briefing against each other, a Brexit agreement on a future relationship was agreed. So you'd think that would also cover the British overseas territories, especially Gibraltar, right? Well, no, not one bit. So with hours to go until the end of the transition period, a separate agreement had to be reached. An agreement that very, very narrowly missed a hard Brexit. So in this video, we're going to take a look at why a separate agreement had to be reached and what that agreement means for the Rock of Gibraltar's relationship with the EU going forward. If you're interested in topics like this, then you might also enjoy the TLDR EU channel, where we talk about, well, it's obvious, isn't it? The EU, Europe and the countries that make up the continent. If you want to go even more further afield, then you can also check out TLDR Global, our brand new channel. We're ready to post a whole bunch of new international stories, so subscribe over there to be notified when we start. The first video will be released when we hit 10,000 subscribers, so be sure to hit the button. If you're not aware, Gibraltar is a small British overseas territory that can be found on the south coast of Spain, dipping into the Mediterranean. First ceded to Britain in 1713, the territory became very important to the UK as the centuries went on, allowing Britain's Royal Navy to control the entry of the Mediterranean Sea. Today, the 6.7 square kilometre territory is home to approximately 34,000 people and continues to have a strategic importance for Britain. So why did Gibraltar need a separate agreement from the rest of the UK if the territory is officially British and the majority of the residents hold British citizenship? In essence, the answer is Spain and contested sovereignty claims. In guidelines published by the European Council all the way back in April 2017, it stressed that no agreement between the EU and the United Kingdom may apply to the territory of Gibraltar without agreement between the Kingdom of Spain and the United Kingdom with further statements from the European Union again stressing that Gibraltar will not be included within the scope of application for future agreements between the EU and the United Kingdom. In the eyes of the Spanish government, Gibraltar is not an integral part of the United Kingdom, it's a British colony in Spanish territory. Spain wishes this territory to be returned to it and fully supports the United Nations in this regard. All in all, meaning that while the initial withdrawal agreement applied to the likes of Gibraltar, the agreement on the future relationship, the deal reached on Christmas Eve, does not automatically apply to the rock. In any regard, both sides are brutally aware of the acute political and economic position that Gibraltar holds in Europe. Having overwhelmingly voted to remain in the EU during the referendum, the border between Gibraltar and Spain was, to all intents and purposes, a minor technicality. Thousands of residents in Gibraltar and thousand more Spanish residents cross the border on a daily, if not hourly, basis, be it to work, to shop, or even just to visit a mate. Prior to the pandemic, an average of 28,500 people cross the border each and every day, a huge number when compared to the island's population. The border also has a difficult history. In 1969, Franco unilaterally closed the border for 13 years, effectively blockading Gibraltar, and it wasn't until 1985 that vehicles were able to cross the border once again. And so, on the 31st of December, literally hours before the end of the transition period, an agreement between the UK and Spain was reached, avoiding a hard Brexit and potentially devastating hard border between Spain and Gibraltar. So, what does this separate agreement entail? The biggest development relates to Gibraltar's position in the European superstructure. The British Overseas Territory will be able to join major EU programmes and will, with the Kingdom of Spain acting as a guarantor, become a quasi-permanent member of the Schengen area. In joining the Schengen area, border controls between Gibraltar and Spain will be more or less completely abolished, with Gibraltar's airport and port becoming the EU's external border. For an initial period of four years, the EU's Frontex border policy will take principal charge of any external border checks and send Frontex border guards to the border, meaning that EU citizens arriving from Spain or any other Schengen country will avoid passport checks altogether when arriving at the airport or port, whilst arrivals from the UK will still have to go through the normal passport control assuming they actually meet the toughened entry requirements in light of the pandemic, requirements replicated throughout Europe and which we've discussed in other videos. 
Spain has, however, affirmed that they'll get the last word on entries into Gibraltar. Spain's foreign minister, in an interview with a Spanish newspaper, explains that Schengen is a set of rules, procedures and tools, including its database, to which only Spain has access. Gibraltar and the United Kingdom do not. That is why the final decision on who enters the Schengen area belongs to Spain. The minister then, when pressed on the matter, made the admission that Spanish customs officers and police will be stationed in Gibraltar. Evidently, there must be a Spanish presence to carry out the minimum tasks of Schengen control. An assertion that was very, very quickly shut down by the ROC's chief minister in a tweet. Under the New Year's Eve agreement, only Gibraltar will decide who enters Gibraltar and Spanish officers will not exercise any controls in Gibraltar at the airport or port now or in four years' time. This is our land. Couldn't be clearer. Beyond the immediate changes on the border, in return for joining the Schengen area, the territory will be required to comply with EU rules and regulations on the likes of financial policy, environment and labour, bringing it far closer to Europe, all while the rest of the UK is moving further away. Both sides have been at pains to stress that this agreement does not impact either side's claim to sovereignty over the rock. With Fabian Picardo, Gibraltar's chief minister, stressing there are no aspects of the framework that's been agreed that in any way transgress Gibraltar's positions on sovereignty, jurisdiction or control. The Gibraltar Constitution Order 1969 is clear. The government will never enter into agreements under which the people of Gibraltar would pass under the sovereignty of another state against their freely and democratically expressed wishes. Schengen participation makes Gibraltar as Spanish as Portugal. Schengen participation also provides Gibraltar with a degree of certainty. The border with Spain is now governed by the Schengen Border Code, which adds clarity to when and if the border can be closed, an extremely important development in light of the past accusations against Spain for deliberately causing traffic chaos by tightening border checks. Schengen participation mitigates the risk of the border being closed for solely political reasons. The agreement does not come into force immediately, however. For now, it remains an agreement in principle, with the European Commission set to step in to turn the agreement into a formal treaty. A process that, according to Spain's foreign minister, will take about six months, with Spain ensuring mobility remains as fluid as possible in the interim. What do you think though? Is Gibraltar's deal the right one? Does it impinge on sovereignty claims? As always, be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Also, be sure to check out TLDR EU and TLDR Global, both are linked in the description. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you still, and if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.